Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for joining me today. It's Alan Berry Labucan with the uh, Alan Berry Report, and I'm also the CEO of Advanced Gold. Advanced Gold is one of the sponsors that helped me bring this show to you. Um, and um, I guess before I start today, I, obviously gold moving and silver moving are uh, are doing some tremendous things for the for our, uh, for the price of those metals and also for the economics and sentiment towards gold stocks. And so uh, later in the show, I think I'll wrap it up on what I see happening with the trends in the price of gold. And then uh, I'll move on to talk about, um, I got a really good question from one of the uh, viewers and I want to deal with that at the end of the show as well. So let's get right on to some of the companies that I'm following and the first two I'm going to deal with are our sponsors. One of them is Advanced Gold, again where I'm the CEO. 38.9 million shares out, 5.64 million valuation market cap. A um, couple things that are going on, let's take a look at the stock first. As you can see back in March, April window here, it uh, bottomed out at about six cents, five and a half, six cents. Since then, it's been making higher highs and higher lows. Uh, that's a trend that I always like to see. Plus, there's also this action here where you go back to January and you can see it uh, topped out at about a mm, little over 20, around 25 cents or so. Since then, it's been creating a very uh, solid uh, cup, and, cup formation. And there's a tilt towards the upside on the second half of that cup. That's a very bullish trend for me. Uh, I'm really happy to see that along with the higher highs, higher lows. Um, you know, generally when you see this kind of action, the next move is to see a, uh, a pop to the upside. Now, um, you wanna look at catalysts and uh, the key catalyst is we're drilling now. Um, we started drilling uh, back on July the 23rd. Uh, as we put in the announcement here, Advanced Gold starts drilling into the heart of big geophysical anomaly, targeting the plumbing of a sulfide system at the Tabascania Gold Project, uh, Tabascania Project in Zacatecas, Mexico. We included, I invite you to go check out that July 23rd, but the key information in that is, the, is this, uh, this anomaly that I've been talking about. It's a 3,500 plus uh, meter continuous chargeability anomaly. Over here, it uh, comes closest to the surface at the south end. This is a southwest and, or south to north anomaly. So at the south end here, we drilled a few holes and we hit stacked layers of disseminated sulfides. And uh, that was very encouraging uh, for a couple reasons. One, we've, we found these stacks layers of, of disseminated sulfides and sulfides are volcanogenic uh, uh, intrusions. And so these sulfides had to come from somewhere. And, uh, uh, and being way out at the end and even getting some promising grades in that was very encouraging as well. But it really wasn't designed to, uh, for, for, to maximize where we would hope for the best grades. We wanted to get into the anomaly to see if the geophysical anomaly was real. And uh, we determined that with three holes. Now, we've started on July the 23rd, the AGT 16. Uh, our 16th hole into the program, the first uh, 12 holes, we're all drilling for um, a series of, uh, of uh, veins that we found that are higher up, closer to surface and to the west of this anomaly. Um, so we don't know if this is the source of that vein system or not, but we, we were looking for the source and that's how we found this bigger anomaly and then drilled into it and found stacked layers of disseminated sulfur. So now, you go to the north end of the anomaly where we're drilling and you can see that the anomaly gets wider and it dips down to below the detection level of the geophysical survey. And so now we're drilling to cut across this, uh, this zone here. This is a projected 600 meter hole. We, depending on what we see in the hole, we can go deeper than that. So. For now, it's a 600 meter hole and we'll see what, uh, what it looks like. My hope is that we start to hit 
some thick intersections of massive sulfides um, that you know show that this is the source of where these uh, where this disseminated stuff way out at the other end of the at the far end of the anomaly in the shallow end uh, comes from so that's what we're doing now. We've got a very cheap valuation. Stock charts looking better. We've got uh, not a lot of stock out, and the insiders, including myself, own a big chunk of the stock. I think we're well over 30% uh, on a fully diluted basis. I'm at about 10%, and uh, our chairman is uh, over 20%, or somewhere around 20% on a fully diluted basis now. So we've got a lot of good stuff going for us and I invite you to check out the news and do your due diligence on Advanced Gold. Our other sponsor is QCX Gold Corp. This is a uh, sort of a new company. They kind of rebirthed it in the last few months and uh, what they're fo they've got a couple of really good uh, projects uh, focus. They have a $16 million valuation, 44 million shares, how I found out about it is um, Kelly Malcolm brought the company to me. Kelly Malcolm is the head geologist for um, the, uh, sorry, the VP of exploration for Amex uh, exploration. And Amex has been one of my big winners in the last couple of years. I originally picked it at 350. As you can see, it's trading at $3.50, seven cents today. Uh, I think it's got a lot of uh, blue sky ahead of it because it's one of the best high grade gold discoveries that I've come across in the last couple of years in Canada. And what makes it the best to me is the continuity of the um, high grade. They put a 10 gram cutoff on that and uh, the high grade is still, con there's still good continuity to it. So Really good team of people involved with QCX that come, that are also involved with Amex. Now, let's uh, go to their website. A QCX has two key areas, their, their Golden Giant project and their Fernet project. So let's uh, actually, the down, I'm gonna download their uh, corporate presentation. It's got some good maps in here uh, so you can see. So Golden Giant, uh, a, uh, a AZM Azimut has really opened up this area due to their Pat One uh, discovery, and uh, Golden Giant has some that could are very right continu contiguous, and also some that could are on a similar structure. And uh, here you can see what I'm talking about. They've got some good. Uh, there's the Pat One discovery. Um, and uh, a similar structural story over here on their Golden Giant project. Um, and then they've got the Fernet project, which is uh, the lots of big mines around there, all structurally controlled. And these guys got some really good projects, really good ground right in amongst all that detour mine complex area. Uh, a bunch, like I said, a bunch of mines there. They're not just grabbing, you know, exploration projects for the sake of exploration projects. Kelly Malcolm's involved in selecting these projects, and I think that they've uh, selected a good group of projects. And um, they're still an underloved sort of a pro company. Uh, as I said, 16 million shares out, 44, uh, 44 million shares out, $16 million market valuation. Take a look at QCX Gold. QCX is their symbol. The next company is Core Mining. Core Mining is one I picked up um, a few months ago when it was a lot cheaper, and it's really been trending up nicely. Uh, they had some good recent uh, drill results out, and um, uh, they, uh, including uh, 76 meters of a gram kind of stuff, 26 meters, two grams, one, gram, one meter of 28 grams, uh, one meter of 42 grams, a meter of 33.9 grams. Lots of uh, exciting stuff is in their last news release. Um, core mining drills, one, 11 meters of 10 grams, gold near surface and extends their lower zone discovery with 52 meters of 1.1 grams of gold. In an open pit situation, that's pretty high grade these days. A lot of these open pits are looking at about a half a, half a gram. This project's in the uh, Caribou region of British Columbia. 
and uh, it's getting a lot of attention. Eric Sprott's involved with it, talking up the company. Um, I, know, I, I really like the trend on this one. As you can see, back in March, they sort of made that low of, um, let's say, 20 cents. Since then, it's been trending higher with some very aggressive moves. Still 147 million valuation. Um, I, I like the trend in this one. It's recently had a cup formation and I think it could break out to much higher prices here in the near term. Uh, BTU mineral, BTU metals, 92 million shares out, 18.4 million, uh, million valuation. They're looking for, uh, they're in the dis uh, Red Lake area near where uh, Great Bear has made their big discovery. They've got a bunch of ground there. The Dixie Halo project, it looks like it could have a similar st structural story. Plus they've got uh, the potential for uh, VMS, uh, vac volcanogenic massive sulfides as well. Um, BTU has uh, 92 million shares out, 18.4 valuation. They've come off recently, but I think that that's probably a good buying opportunity where they are right now. Um, some excitement and work on their project would help that valuation out a lot. So keep an eye on BTU, it's one I like. Fremont Gold uh, is 81 million shares out, 11 million valuation, nice cheapy here. As you can see, they've been trending up nicely, currently trading at around 13 cents. That's a little cheaper than their uh, recent high. Um, let's take a look at their website. Um, here we go, Fremont. Their news, recent news, 2020. Fremont intersects thick near surface oxide gold mineralization at their Griffin Gold Project. This is in Nevada. Uh, it's in the Cortez trend. One gram is pretty good stuff these days in an open pit target. Uh, oxide gold, so it's really easily leachable. Um, I'm Blaine Monahan, the CEO of Fremont, said I'm very pleased with the results from the first three drill holes to be completed at Griffin since the late 1990s. Drill hole GF20-3 met and exceeded our expectations. Thick, near surface and oxidized drill hole GF23 and reinforces our belief that the Griffin holds tremendous opportunity for the discovery of a new Carlin type deposit. I look forward to reporting the next set of drill results to investors, end quote. Um, I'm a big fan of Nevada projects. They often get Nev the Nevada premium. This is one that I think could get that Nevada premium, but there's still really early days in exploration of that uh, Griffin project. So take a look at FRE on the venture and uh, do your homework on that one because I think it's, uh, it's cheap and it could get less cheap very soon. Uh, fireweed zinc. This is a zinc uh, silver lead story in um, up in the Yukon. Um, 42 million shares out, 26 million valuation. Late last year they came across a really impressive zone and they're about to get back into that zone that um, it's close to surface, it's nice high grade. Um, if you're looking for some zinc uh, uh, type exposure. This is one you want to look at for sure. Fireweed, they announced that they uh, increased their financing from 3.5 to 4.9 million on 11th of June. They had a good uh, ex um, presentation out on their uh, various project or their, their projects and what they plan on doing. Um, and uh, I think you want to take a look at that corporate presentation here. Uh, stimulus, zinc markets, and opportunity. Why Macmillan Pass is essential. I like those essential uh, projects. Um, growth potential, significant potential remains on tap. Uh, they talk a lot about their zinc. Uh, stimulus that could uh, increase the zinc demand quite aggressively, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, got some visitors here coming into the screen, one of the things with doing work at home these days, um, but uh, there you go. Um, uh, where McMillan Pass falls along the, uh, the, the comparables 
uh, looking really good. Um, <clears throat> some of the grades, uh, 1.8 grams of silver, 0.64 grams of uh, lead, 5.38% zinc. They got a lot of this. Check out the website. It's a good one. I like, uh, I like the guy running it, uh, Brandon McDonald, smart guy. And, uh, um, and I think he's got himself a great project. Next up, Azimut Exploration. Azimut's one I picked uh, back when they were down around here. They spiked up uh, and now they've come off. What's caused them to come off is a bit odd. It's actually quite good drill results. Um, I guess the market was anticipating better results, but uh, I was pretty happy with what I saw. And now you're getting another opportunity to buy them down around the level when I first started covering them. Uh, Azimut, uh, here was their discloses their uh, results from their Elmer property. Two more points, uh, 14 meters of 12 grams of gold, 4.9 meters of 29 grams of gold, 12 meters of four grams of gold, 10 meters of seven grams of gold. Some really nice looking stuff there. I was quite surprised that um, it, uh, it sold off the way it did after that news, but I'm, you know, surprised and happy in a way because now I get to feature it to my audience again when I think that they have a pretty reasonable valuation and they've got a bunch of projects in Quebec too. These guys are excellent explorationists. They've acquired a bunch of good projects and uh, I really like the outlook for Azimut especially at these cheaper valuations here. So take a look at AZM on the Venture Exchange. 107 million valuation that I think still is cheap. Scorpio Gold, uh, 68 million shares out, 12.39 million valuation, recently came to life. Let's go to the news and you'll see why they came to life. Um, they, uh, Scorpio intersects 12.47 grams of gold and 176 grams of silver over 7.6 meters, including 53 grams of gold over 1.52 meters and 3,960 grams. I love it when they can report those in kilograms per ton. So you're looking at 3.9 kilograms per ton over 0.15 of a meter in their, gold, in their underground drilling at their gold wedge project in Nevada. Another Nevada play that I think is just starting to emerge and uh, could uh, could have a lot of upside and get that Nevada value that Nevada premium only a 12.39 million valuation add a zero to that uh, on the left side of the uh, decimal point when they have success in uh, in Nevada and I like what I see so far and you want to keep an eye on that one do your homework on Scorpios SGN is their symbol they trade on the venture Next one is gold on resources, kind of a sleepy stock here, 10 million market value, only 17 million shares out. Uh, I like those super tight deals. Gold on is, um, is focused in Ontario. The on and gold on is, the, uh, is where that comes from. Their latest, let's go to their, uh, let's go to their news section. I'm gonna go to their latest news. Here, let me move that up news and we'll look at some of the highlights. Gold on expands their West Madsen project acquiring two claim blocks contiguous, contiguous with uh, Pure Gold's Red Lake mine. That's not too far from going into production so could add a lot of enthusiasm for their uh, for that ground around there. Uh, then they uh, they made a new discovery at their West Madsen within the key Balmer stratigraphy. That's the right kind of rocks for this greenstone belt in the Red Lake area. So, you know, these guys have some good people involved. They're not just grabbing any kind of projects. They do good work. And again, they've got a, you know, a super tight vehicle, 17.6.16 million shares out, 10 million market cap. Stock's been sort of sideways. They're coming into the season where they should be putting out a lot of uh, news about exploration and drilling. So those are the kind of catalysts that can make a, a company like Goldon appreciate quite significantly. So 
take a look at them, super tight, good project, good area, gold on, GLD on the venture. Opus One Resources, I recently picked this one up at under a dime, it's a little over a dime now. They've got 72 million shares out, 8 million valuation. Um, let's, uh, let's go to their news section and you can see some of the good highlights. Opus One Winter Drilling intersects gold zone on its Noel project, 7.96 grams per ton gold over 3.7 meters. They've been doing financings. In fact, they just announced today that they closed the financing. I, I think it was for about 2 million bucks. You'll have to look that one up. It's not posted on their website as of yet. But um, yeah, now they've got some good money to get in there and here it is. Uh, first closing 1.65 million. So they've done a, a good raise there. They're gonna have a lot of money to do their exploration. Um, I'm gonna go back here again, 10 million valuation is super cheap these days. And uh, especially with gold going up the way it is. So take a look at gold on, do your homework on that one. The final uh, company today is Japan Gold. Japan Gold just announced today that they have uh, commenced drilling on their Ora Takamine project in Kyushu, Japan. Um, this is a where the Hishik Hishikari is in Japan. That's uh, a low sulfidation epithermal gold system. That's exactly what they're looking for at this Ora Takamine. Um, they, the drilling program consists of two initial drill holes, approximately 950 meters. So they're looking at about 475 meters each. Historic records report high grade production, including 21,000 ounces of gold mined at a gold grades greater than 20 grams per ton at Aura Mine. And what you want to be looking for is the, the, those kind of grades in the known veins and also if they're able to find some new veins. It's been a long time since there was any exploration in Japan and um, you know, looking for the next Hishikari, if they find anything that looks similar to that, uh, the valuation, even with the 174 million shares out, you can see a lot higher valuation. Now you can also see that they've created a nice cup formation. Now they've had the handle, now they've got a catalyst with drilling, Keep your fingers crossed, but um, definitely one I think uh, speculators that like high grade gold projects should be taking a look at. So now let's talk a little bit about the price of gold. Um, here's the nearest month's future contract. It's up over $2,000 today, 2024. And um, really liking this, as you can see, basically started the a year ago, it was trading at about 1350. Now over $2,000, very impressive move for the price of gold, tacked on about 50% this year, this last year. And uh, I've been talking a lot in the past uh, number of months about a perfect storm for the price of gold. And uh, the perfect storm is all this stimulus is creating a explosive growth in debt. The debt is at a level that the Federal Reserve can't raise interest rates. They can't lower interest rates because they're already at near zero. So the Fed is really painted into a corner that they can't get out of ever and because of the amount of debt out there. If they were to raise interest rates in any significant way, they would crush any kind of economic growth and push the economy into a, uh, into a recession very rapidly. That's not what they're looking for. I don't see that they can ever move interest rates in any, and I know how long ever is, uh, but with that amount of debt out, it's really hard to see them raising interest rates in any kind of way. Now, another thing I talked about in past shows was that I thought the US dollar was very overvalued when it was up around a, a 100 on the index. That's a basket of currencies um, priced against the US dollar. It's dropped dramatically since then, let's say from 100 down to 93. That's a pretty significant move when you're looking at it as a basket uh, against a basket of currencies, global currencies. And um, I don't really see a lot of reasons to believe that that's going to get any better. Um, 
economic growth is, you know, they just printed their worst quarterly growth ever in the United States. You've got all that enormous debt. You've got the Fed unable to really stimulate the economy in any significant way. And uh, I just think there's more downside risk on the U.S. dollar. And, and that adds to the perfect storm. Now, the key thing that really adds the most to the to the perfect storm is the supply and demand scenario. Um, for many years now, the, you've seen uh, head grades at mines going dropping dramatically. You've seen uh, the discovery grades dropping dramatically. I mean, when I first got in the business, nobody wanted to look at anything under three grams. Now the average discovery is under one gram. Um, and meanwhile, we've got gold going through the roof, so they can't really crank up supply and yet you've got strong demand coming from all over the world. Central bankers are buying again. It looks like we're going to head into a scenario of a de facto uh, gold standard. And sometimes economics have a way of straightening out problems. And one of the problems that uh, governments have is that they can, uh, you know, they can print money and, and debt as like it's going out of style with no, nothing backing it. And, that's what gold did in the past until they all went off the gold standard. And, and I think that uh, we're going to see a, you know, a lot of these uh, global uh, uh, economies and currencies um, buying back that gold and, uh, and backing up their currency with some rationality. I wouldn't stop at gold, by the way. I would be backing it up with gold, silver, copper, battery metals, things that are needed in order to turn everything electric, which is uh, the trend for the world. And I don't think that trend's going to end. Now, uh, the final company I wanted to talk about today is um, on uh, is uh, Calinex. Um, CNX is their symbol. Um, here is their uh, uh, CEO.ca. I'll get their uh, get their uh, website up here. One of the readers, uh, one of our viewers, found out about uh, Kalinex through our um, through the shows. I picked it uh, quite a while ago uh, when it was down here at under a dollar, and uh, he said to me, "If you have an opinion on when to sell stock, for example, I bought Kalinex at." 78 cents US dollars, and then it went to around $3 US, which was an increase of around 400%. If you were in my position, would you have, have sold all of it or part of it? So whenever I look at a situation like that, I always go back and say, well, would I buy it today? Um, and 10.6 million shares out, 27.4 million market value. That's a very cheap valuation. Now let's go to their website and uh, look at um, look at uh, some of their recent news. And looking at their recent news, uh, Kalinex enhances targets long. Ah, sorry, Kalinex en enhances targets a long trend of silver discoveries at their Nash Creek project in Bathurst. Uh, they've got some really sweet grades on that. Uh, 28 meters of 57 grams of silver. Uh, I don't want them to. 16.5 uh, meters of 94 grams. 19 meters of 36 grams with lead and zinc in there as well. That's on the Bathurst project. Kalinex increases their land package at, at that Bathurst project. Uh, they've made silver discoveries there. They're testing conductive anomalies in their Flin Flon mining district of Manitoba. That's a key region for them. Their management all has good experience there. So I, I like the quality of projects. That's originally why I picked up coverage of them. So with that cheap valuation and so little stock out, it doesn't take a lot to see that stock move aggressively. Like today, 228,000 shares traded. It's up 13, 37 cents, 16.8 percent. This is a very interesting company. I think that at a 27.4 million dollar market value, um, you know, like I said, they they get some success, and that can 
you go no go multiples of that valuation but at, you know you got to be responsible with your you know if you've made three four hundred percent gain on your stock you kind of want to look for um, uh, taking some profits so on this one uh, I would if I was in the position of that not knowing his economic situation and his portfolio and all that I would still advise taking some profits maybe a third of the position or half of the position off there's always other good things out there but in reality I wouldn't want to sell it all because it's hard to find 10.6 million share stocks out there with you know a 27 million valuation and great people involved uh, so I wouldn't sell it all I'd sell some of it take some profits look to put it somewhere else um, and I think that that's good advice anytime you have uh, that kind of a game so on that note thanks a lot for the questions thanks a lot for joining me today do your homework on all these. The show is for information purposes only. It's important for you to do your homework and speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decisions. On that note, you have a great day and we will talk to you soon.